It's been more than two months since a family lost five loved ones in a deadly crash. Our lives are not going to be the same because of this young man's decision to drink and drive. Can they forgive the teen who broke their family apart? Plus, a deadly day on Valley Roads. Obviously, it's been a very, very bad day um, for drivers in the southern Nevada area. What troopers say could have saved the life of a little girl killed in this crash. Then, firefighters deal with scorching temperatures while putting out a fire on the Las Vegas Strip. What new construction site caught fire? News 3 Nightside starts right now. We're watching out for you. This is News 3 Nightside. Good evening, I'm Luis Cruz along with Maria Silva. Gerard has the night off. A store clerk takes the law into his own hands by turning the tables on a would-be robber. Now the clerk shot and killed a man who he says was trying to rob his North Las Vegas store early this morning. It all happened at a convenience store near Camino Al Norte and Lone Mountain. Marie Mortera has more on how it all went down. The elements of a crime scene, nothing new to this North Las Vegas store, but this attempted robbery had a different ending. Suspect is armed with a firearm, threatens the clerk with that firearm. The clerk then, in an attempt to protect himself and the other patrons inside the store, produces a firearm and fires at the suspect. He was taken to UMC where he later died. The store owner says the clerk, a North Las Vegas resident in his 50s, went home shaken, a feeling shared by some neighbors, although they're not surprised. Well, I'm alarmed by it, definitely, but I mean, you hear about crime everywhere in the cities. It's unfortunate, but it goes with growth. Mark Sharp is a regular customer and saw the crime tape this morning, but assuming it was another robbery, he shrugged it off. After hearing the real story, he says he personally wouldn't have tried to confront the suspect. Merchandise and money is not worth getting shot over. But understands in an act of desperation why the clerk decided to choose another way. I think people are they're getting to the point where they've had enough. You know, they just they just tired of being pushed around. So it's unfortunate, but I think that's the way society's getting anymore. In North Las Vegas, Marie Mortera, News Three. And the clerk likely won't face any charges for the shooting. As for the suspect, police aren't saying much except to say he was in his late teens to early 20s. It was a night one family will never forget when five family members were killed by an alleged drunk driver. Tomorrow, the teenage suspect is expected in court, but tonight, News 3's Rob McMillan sat down with some family members who say the pain of what happened will never go away. Our lives are not going to be the same. Uh, because of this young man's decision to, to drink and drive. Juan Miranda is talking about this man, Ronald Jane Jr. Police say the 19-year-old was drunk when he rammed his truck into this SUV. Five of the eight people inside were killed. Miranda's wife and son were injured. His two-year-old daughter, Itzelis, was among those who didn't make it. It changed our lives forever. I mean, my baby's gone because of this, because of this young man's decision, responsibility. He's a young kid. Miranda yeah. says he knows he'll hear about what's going on with the trial, but he probably won't follow it himself. I really don't think that anything they do to him or anything he says or anything he does is going to give me my baby back. But the Mirandas hope the attention the trial is getting might help prevent future drunk driving accidents. I just hope someone will say, hey, you know, I better think about this twice before I do it. Meantime, the Mirandas will never forget their two-year-old daughter, a life that was taken away from them far too soon. All that joy we had together is going to live with us in our memories. And I believe in God. I believe we're gonna see her again. And this time we're gonna be together forever. Rob McMillan, News 3. Ronald Jane Jr. is in jail on $2 million bail. His preliminary hearing is set for tomorrow morning at 10 a.m.
Several families are dealing with tragedies this weekend after four major wrecks killed two, including a teen and a young girl. This afternoon, a tragic crash on the I-15 near Apex killed a 12-year-old girl and critically injured a 9-year-old. Witnesses say the driver lost control of the car, causing it to flip over. Troopers say they were not wearing seat belts. The airbag can only do so much. The airbag uh, in conjunction with that seat belt is probably the best thing you can do for yourself from a safety standpoint. Um, I'm here to tell you this morning we had, uh, we had three people in the backseat of that Geo Metro, two of whom we can confirm were not seat belted in. Both of them were ejected from the car. And on the 215, a driver veered off the roadway, causing the vehicle to roll over. It happened at the Tropicana exit. Two passengers were rushed to the hospital in critical condition. The driver stayed behind and helped troopers figure out what went wrong. Officials don't believe alcohol or drugs were factors. And yesterday, a 19-year-old was killed when her convertible rolled over on the 215 at Town Center. No word yet on what caused that crash, but troopers say a blown tire may be to blame. A man who opened fire on gamblers and visitors at the New York, New York Hotel Casino will face a judge this week. This is 51-year-old Steven Zagreen. He's charged with several counts of attempted murder. Police say Zagreen fired 16 rounds from his handgun, wounding four people. Another person was also trampled. Police say Zagreen was trying to reload when four vacationers, two who are in the military, and two special agents with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement tackled him. Zagreen is booked in the Clark County Detention Center and is being held without bail. He's expected to be in court this Tuesday. Wildfires across the West have forced hundreds of people from their homes in several states, including right here in Nevada. But one of the worst is burning in Utah. 160,000 acres have burned near Milford. Officials say the fire did not grow overnight, but it did increase in size today. Interstates 15 and 70 were reopened this morning after being closed because of the fire and heavy smoke. The smoke is blamed for several accidents, including a fatal motorcycle accident, which killed two people. More than 500 fire firefighters are battling the fire, which was sparked by lightning on Friday afternoon. It's tough enough to be out in this heat, let alone fight a fire, but that was the case for fire crews today when the Palazzo Hotel caught fire. That's a luxury hotel that's under construction near the Venetian. Investigators say welders were working on the 25th floor when high winds sent sparks flying onto the ballroom's roof. The fire was knocked down in less than an hour and no major damage was reported, but one firefighter was treated for heat exhaustion. Now we were under an excessive heat warning most of the week. Robert Santos joins us now with more on what we can expect for the upcoming week. Yes, Maria, uh, at the very least five to 10 degrees cooler uh, this week compared to last week. And we've already started to see a gradual cool down uh, this weekend. Some of our high temperatures, 109 for Centennial. Same thing for uh, North Las Vegas and here at the station, 112 for downtown. And uh, we're looking at Southeast Las Vegas, 110 there for a high temperature. Let's take a look at the current uh, readings right now for McCarran. We're looking at 97 degrees right now. Winds from the southwest at six miles per hour. No recent gusts reported there, but earlier a bit breezy as we uh, saw there with the Palazzo fire. That's what sparked that fire. They're saying it contributed at least to that fire when it uh, blew some of the sparks to that roof. And then a first look forward. Here's what we can expect. Some changes this week. High temperatures 105 to 110 as opposed to 112 to 117, which is what we had last week. So cooler and then increasing clouds come Tuesday and Thursday. And we're also looking for mountains isolated thunderstorms. And this could be the first uh, first monsoon storm that we're going to get for this season. So we'll have the complete uh, seven day forecast coming up a little later. For now, I'm going to send it back to Maria. Actually, I'll take it from here. Thank you very much, Robert. Now to Iraq, where tonight there is a major death toll to report. Random attacks have killed 220 people, including two U.S. soldiers. The victims include those who died today in a surge of bombings and shootings around Baghdad. Iraqi politicians are losing hope that the country's security forces can prevent extremist attacks. In the meantime, Washington is pressing Baghdad to meet the set 18 benchmarks by September. And coalition commanders are under pressure from some lawmakers to get U.S. forces out of Iraq. We just got the surge brigades in the fight on the 15th of June. That was only three weeks ago. And we're already having great effect in my area. We've killed 50 of the enemy. We've captured over 250 more. We've taken away 50 weapons caches. And we are having effect. So it's going to take time for these surge units to have the effect that we want. It can't happen overnight. 
Meantime, the top U.S. commander warns of more violence to come. He predicts extremists will try to pull off a variety of sensational attacks in a bid to further weaken U.S. support for the war. Boeing has unveiled its newest airplane today, the 787 a Dreamliner, which is being called the most technologically advanced and most environmentally friendly commercial jetliner in the world. Gina Kim has more on today's unveiling from Boeing's headquarters in Everett, Washington. The Boeing 787 Dreamliner. In an elaborate ceremony that looked more like a major Hollywood production than an airplane debut, Boeing unveiled its newest jetliner today, one that the company says will revolutionize the industry. To make it more affordable, comfortable and convenient for passengers, more efficient and profitable for airlines, and more environmentally progressive for our Earth. The Dreamliner was made in practically every time zone on the planet. 70% of it was built by 50 different companies. The 787 is the world's first airplane made mostly of composite materials. A high-tech plastic was used to make a solid fuselage, eliminating the need for 1,500 aluminum sheets and 50,000 fasteners. Boeing says the jet is lighter and greener than any other plane of its size, using 20% less fuel, producing fewer carbon emissions, and creating the least amount of noise pollution. We work you know, very hard and, and tried a lot of new and different things to, that we hadn't tried before, and they work. The Dreamliner is also touted as the most comfortable with new turbulence reducing technology, better pressure and less dryness in the cabins, and the largest windows of any plane. Unlike Airbus's Jumbo A380, which can seat up to 800 passengers, the mid-sized Dreamliner can carry up to 330. Airbus takes to the skies this October, the Dreamliners in May of 2008. Boeing has received more than 600 orders for the plane, making this the most successful commercial airplane launch in history. In Everett, Washington, Gina Kim, NBC News. What I want to know is how's the leg room? That's what, hey, me too, I'm with you there. They Pretty squeeze cool, you though. in now. Well, summer's in full swing and school's out for many students. That usually means kids spend a lot of their time swimming. But when it comes to the younger ones, paramedics who deal with disasters firsthand say it only takes moments for a child to disappear and drown. When you have to go work on a lifeless body that is only four years old, it's one of the toughest calls that our paramedics can actually respond to. Up next, an in-depth and disturbing report parents can't afford to miss on drowning dangers. Thank you for making us your number one newscast at 11 o'clock. This is News 3 Nightside. Drownings and ear drownings happen frequently during the summer months. Now the video you're about to see is not easy to watch, but it carries a powerful message. That message, constant adult supervision is the only way to make sure a child is safe around the pool. News 3's Beth Fisher has the story. Good job, Naya. Perfect. These kids are learning to swim at the YMCA of Southern Nevada, but swimming lessons alone aren't enough to protect your child from drowning. Water play can turn tragic in a matter of seconds, and you may not hear it happen. Drowning is known as the silent death. There's very little splashing and hardly ever any kind of noise or yelling or whatever. It's a point that's driven home in this video of a near drowning. A child slips to the bottom of this pool unnoticed, even by the people swimming right over her. She doesn't flail or yell, as some might expect. The lifeguards missed it. They tell us there were only two of them watching a pool with more than 100 swimmers. Fortunately, this girl was rescued quickly thanks to a high-tech computer system. It uses cameras that scan the pool for motionless swimmers. The cameras are both inside the pool and above it. The system sets off an alarm. It alerts lifeguards to potential problems in case they don't see it on their own. This technology isn't in Vegas yet, but could be soon in commercial pools. Do you hear that jackhammer? That's the sound of yet another pool going up in the neighborhood. It is that time of year, and most child drownings do happen in backyard pools. They usually involve toddlers. They don't know how to swim, and they're pretty adventurous. Experts recommend putting up a backyard fence like this one. And then this was actually the day before his accident. 
the day before. It's something Sierra Sinetti knows all too well. Her son, Austin, nearly drowned two years ago in his grandfather's pool. It happened during a family party with several adults nearby. I couldn't even explain to you it happened because it happened that quick. I think he tried walking on the pool cover, and my husband had actually pulled the, the pool cover back and found him, and my stepmom jumped in. He was just lifeless and just blue. You look good today. You look really good today. Austin is now three. He suffered brain damage and is in a vegetative state. Sierra spends most of her time caring for him. It's 150% preventable and no family needs to go through it. It's a message echoed by the Clark County Fire Department in a new public service campaign. Could your child ever become a drowning victim? Not my child. Take a second, protect the child. When you have to go work on a lifeless body that is only four years old, that was, you know, uh, somehow or other got into the backyard swimming pool, um, it, it's one of the toughest calls that our paramedics can actually respond to. Just a few minutes of oxygen deprivation can lead to permanent brain damage or death. It's been the worst <laughs> experience of our life, but we still have him and he's here with us, you know, and it, and it is a lot of work to take care of, but I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't change it for anything. And that was Beth Fisher reporting. You can find out more about the anti-drowning system profiled in our story and see more of that dramatic rescue video by visiting our website, kvbc.com, and clicking on Healthline. We have dramatic video to show you tonight of a personal watercraft that took a nasty spill. Take a look at this. You can see two people heading toward a spillway on the lake. And off they go, a nearly 30-foot jump off the lake's edge. Remarkably, they were not seriously hurt. Well, hundreds of people flogged to Las Vegas this weekend to tie the knot on 7707. But a special little girl also picked the lucky day to enter the world. This is little Azariah. She was born to Gary and Angel Patterson of Las Vegas on 7707 at 707 in the morning. So if you're superstitious or believe in numerology, you'll say this is a very lucky little girl. Lucky. <laughs> We're just happy she's uh, healthy. Yeah, yeah. very yeah. excited that she's really healthy and active. Yeah, but it seems pretty amazing to me, though. So, so. welcome to our world. Yeah, <laughs> cute and lucky. There you go, 7707. Our hot world. Our hot world, yes. <laughs> yeah. and speaking yeah. of sevens, what's the Santo 7 looking like? Well, that's coming up. Hold on. Just <laughs> hang tight. It's coming. It's coming, folks. So let's first uh, check some uh, current conditions out there right now. Uh, North Las Vegas, Craig and MLK, 97 degrees. Back in the 90s for many spots. Low 90s for Lakes East. Sahara and Cimarron winds out of the southeast at 4. And Spring Valley around Spring Mountain and Jones, it's 96 degrees there. Here's a live look right now from our Mandalay Bay Cam. Mostly clear skies tonight. We're looking this week at a little cooler week. Temperatures not going to be as hot. 5 to 10 degrees cooler than last week. We're looking at also uh, the chance for increasing clouds, especially around midweek and around that time, isolated thunderstorms, especially up, mainly actually up in the mountains. All right, so last night it was 89 degrees for an overnight low, and then at the hottest time today, we got up to 110 outside McCarran. 110 for the official high today, 3 degrees away from the record, and 6 away from the average temperature. Sunset tonight around 8 o'clock and will rise just around 5.30 tomorrow morning. Currently, it's 97 degrees outside McCarran. Winds from the southwest at 6. And around midnight, we're expecting to get down to 94 degrees. Winds out of the south southwest at 8. And then 3 o'clock in the morning, 88 degrees. So 89 for the overnight low last night for Las Vegas. Uh, tonight, we're expecting to get down to 85. 84 for Boulder City, 80 for Mesquite, 85 for Laughlin, and 70s for Pahrump and Prim. And then tomorrow morning, things are going to warm up like this. 104, 102 for Pahrump and Prim, respectively, and then 108s for Las Vegas, Boulder City, and 111 for Laughlin. So we've got an area of high pressure, and that's keeping us pretty clear right now. Some clouds are going to be uh, increasing as we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Some moisture out to the east and upper low down here just off the coast of California. And so this week, the pattern is going to be a southerly flow. Some moisture coming from the south. And that's what's going to increase the chance for thunderstorms up in the mountains. For tomorrow, though, Mount Charleston is going to just see some increasing clouds, especially in the afternoon. Uh, the overnight low tonight, 57 degrees, and then warming up tomorrow, Monday, 
Monday, yeah, a lot of you coming off a long five day week for those of you who took off since Independence Day. And the high temperature for Mount Charleston, 80 degrees, winds out of the south southwest at 5 to 15 miles per hour. And then when the kids head off to school tomorrow at 7 o'clock, 86 degrees, light winds. And, uh, and then we're going to see 95 degree temperatures for 9 o'clock, 103 for 12 noon, 3 p.m., 108. As you plan this week, if you're looking for something for the family to do, how about taking the kids to the Summer Youth Film Series? Nanny McPhee this Thursday plays at East Las Vegas Community Center. It's free at 2 p.m. And then the Las Vegas Splash Team invites you to another hot tropical night at the Pavilion Center Pool. Saturday at 6 to 9 p.m. Kind of a luau. There'll be Samoan fire eaters, Hawaiian dancers, snow cones, all kinds of things to keep you cool. Here's the Santo 7. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, increasing clouds. 106, 105, 108 for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 108 for tomorrow, too. Hey, stick around. We got more coming up right after this. More than 100 of the biggest names in music took part in an incredible global effort to raise awareness about the climate crisis on Saturday. NBC's Ron Allen has a look at the music and the message of Live Earth. Australian tribal leaders kick things off. A 24-hour series of concerts claiming to be the biggest and greenest entertainment event ever. Orchestrated by pop culture's green icon, Al Gore. Enjoy the show. Ten shows on all seven continents, with scientists performing from Antarctica. A music mix with an eco-friendly message. Answer the call. Live Earth ran on green power. It recycled everything, even the stages. But was anyone listening to anything but the beat? 